Welcome to this week in the world of wrestling. Welcome to TwitWow, the best wrestling podcast made for wrestling fans, by wrestling fans, on the web today. I'm John, that's my cohort and commentary, Ashton, and this is our Monday Night Raw Review. And And this is exactly why next year we will continue reviewing Raws after TLC rather than waiting until the new year. Exactly. Exactly. This was the last Raw of 2014. And one of the best, one of the best without question. I mean, you can hear it in our voices, how we're talking. Just so many great segments tonight. I'm not even going to because normally I like to pick apart specific things, say things that this show accomplished. There was so much. I don't even know where to start. I mean, Ashton, what did you think of it, brother? We had a debut that worked out pretty well. We had uh, a couple of reintroductions of characters we had uh just a lot of amazing we had one essentially uh i guess you could call it a reworking of a character we had some character development we had more promos tonight than i think we've had all year from anybody not named triple h and stephanie mcmahon it we had amazing heel work towards the end of the night it was just an awesome episode of raw the best episode of Raw in months, and one of the best episodes of Raw all year. Without question, and with that said, I want to get right into it. I can't even contain myself, so with our first segment, Heat of the Night! And I do have to say, despite all the energy, I do have one Heat of the Night tonight. Okay. I do not like that Dean Ambrose and Bray Wyatt have suffered from gimmick match overkill. Because we know. Uh, okay, yeah. I I didn't even remember that, but I think that it's just because I just kind of saw that they were doing that next week and rolled my eyes and moved on. Yeah, and I don't blame Maybe, you. Maybe, honestly, you know what I think would happen? I think that if you wouldn't have brought it up tonight, it would have been a unanimous heat of the night next week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because, and that's the thing, I was even talking with you before we went into recording. I didn't know if this maybe would be more appropriate to classify it as a nitpick, but... I think I classified it as Heat of the Night because I love both guys. I think I, you might want to just kind of call it as like a preparatory Heat of the Night because like you don't have a problem with anything that happened this week involving that. The problem that you have is what's happening next week involving it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's the further implication that these guys are having yet another gimmick match. This is This is the fourth one. They had a TLC match. And, and you know what, dude? I think that the reason they might be doing this is so that Ambrose can finally look strong in one of these things. And maybe. And see, that's what I'm thinking. With an ambulance match, I mean, it is a different type of animal altogether. What's going to happen to the loser? They're going to be off TV for a while. Who Who's the winner going to be? So there is that intrigue there. I just want these guys to move forward, and I really wish they would take their foot off the gas a little bit with all these gimmick matches they're throwing at us. But I just wanted to keep that succinct. Uh, do you have any heats tonight tonight? No, but I do have one nitpick. Okay, let's have at it. The missed opportunity that was the Usos celebration not being interrupted by the Ascension. Yes, you and I had major qualms with this, so I'm really glad you brought this up. Uh, I agree with you completely. I feel like this was a missed opportunity. You know, you don't get many chances to really make moments. Everybody can have a debut, right? But I I think it's really a select few that can have a moment. And I feel like while the Ascension got a debut, they were robbed of a moment tonight by being able to come out, even if they didn't want to attack the Usos straight up, just kind of stare them down or do whatever. Just something that says, hey, we're here and we're coming for those WWE Tag Team titles. I really hate that they uh, squandered that opportunity in favor of what they went with. It wasn't bad, but it could have been so much better. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where when they, when they didn't come out, we were just like, okay, so are they going to be baby faces? And are they going to be like the kind of guys who get over the way Ryback did during his first run where they're just kind of killing everybody and they, they get over that way because the only thing that really would have made sense then is if they wanted them to be baby faces and it wouldn't have made sense for them to attack the Usos because the Usos are top baby faces in the tag division. And that yes, hurt me to say, but, um, 
the fact that they showed up and then they were beating the holy crap out of Mizdow tells me, no, they're not necessarily baby faces. They might be tweeners, but they're very clearly not baby faces. So why not just use the Usos momentum? Yeah, exactly. It was the perfect catapult for these guys. And and you know, you and I, it's been kind of a standing criticism with us uh, how NXT talents, they come up to the main roster and maybe they'll start out a little something, but then they quickly fizzle out. I don't want the Ascension to be added to that list. And I would have marked out so hard if they had come out and put the boots to the Usos. And it's just, again, what they did wasn't bad. I'm not trying to trash that, but, again, missed opportunities. So we'll have to see what the Ascension does going forward. And you know what's crazy, dude? And you know what? Actually, I I apologize. My mind just got completely off track. I was going to say something about something that happened later on the night that has nothing to do with this. Let's stay on track here. I'll talk about that later. But still, yeah, the Usos winning the titles and celebrating for as long as they did was a perfect opportunity for the Ascension to debut and destroy them. And it was a missed opportunity that WWE didn't take, so let's move on. Absolutely. So with that said, let us get right into our Monday Night Raw review. And we are in the Verizon Center in Washington, D.C., and we open things up with Tony Chimmel making introductions, Ashton. Well, I think that they only let him do this one because I don't think that he was used for any of the other comp- the other announcements because I, I know for a fact that Lillian Garcia was back by at least the middle of the show, if not earlier. Right, right. And they let him do this because of his infamous rated R superstar. (laughs) Pretty good imitation there, yes. And that's exactly what he does. He introduces Edge and Christian. Uh, The crowd, they're very energetic at this opening here. Edge Edge and Christian, it's great to see these guys. Uh, They talk about how exciting it is to be a part of the final Raw of 2014. Uh, You know, they both agree that they should send off You know what, dude? The crazy thing is they didn't necessarily make this show better, but yeah, they were lucky to be a part of it because this show was awesome. Yeah, it was, and I think their presence in its own way definitely contributed to that. I love seeing these guys in the segments they got. I thoroughly enjoyed, but we'll get into those later. Uh, they said they want to, you know, send things off with a bang, E and C style. Uh, and Christian says, well, tonight we're going to do a special edition of the Peep Show. And then Edge kind of gives him a face, and he says, no, 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 we're doing the Cutting Edge. And then they kind of go uh, back and forth about, is it going to be the Peep Show? Is it going to be the Cutting Edge? And they decide that they're going to merge the shows together into one ultimate super show being the Cutting Edge Peep Show. And that makes they... it sound even more pornographic. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Uh, they say their guest will be Seth Rollins. We're getting uh, Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns tonight. Christian announced that we're getting a champion versus champion bout, Rusev versus Dolph Ziggler. And probably one of the biggest pops in this opening segment, uh, Christian mentions that Daniel Bryan is going to address the WWE Universe tonight, and that gets a big yes chant to break out. Um, and they're about to do, Edge and Christian, a five-second pose, because everybody has flash photography now. And they get interrupted by the world heavyweight champion, Brock Lesnar. This was my first huge pop of the night. I freaked out when Brock's music hit because, like, everyone was getting all ready for the the ENC five-second pose. And my freaking mom even got her phone out to take a picture of them on the TV. (laughs) And then Brock's music hit, and I was so happy. Yeah, man, this is a great way. I I mean, here's the thing. There have been a lot of criticisms, a lot of debate about Brock's championship reign, but one thing that I don't think anybody can really deny, when he comes out, all eyes are on him, and you know he's going to attract some major heat with whatever he does. And, yeah, he comes out. And I love Paul Heyman here because, again, this is where Paul Heyman is so invaluable and really at his best because, uh, you know, Heyman comes out, he does his usual uh, praise of Brock Lesnar, but then he, you know, he turns his attention to Agent Christian and he says, well, you know, we're not going to gonna do anything to you. I, I mean, you, Edge, you have a broken neck. Your career is over. You can't compete anymore. And then probably the most interesting tidbit that got quite a few people talking, he mentions to Christian, and you, you've suffered too many concussions that you're not allowed to compete in the ring anymore. So I'm guessing we can officially classify Christian's WWE status as retired. Yeah, uh, that's so weird. Yeah. I mean, it was so low-key, you know, and I I think that's what really got everybody off guard is we just thought that they were waiting uh, for him to be written back into the show somehow, but I guess uh, they wanted him to go quietly into the night, so to speak, and just wrap his career up. Um, 
So Heyman says, you know, Lesnar, he has no interest in crippling you guys because you're already crippled. Uh, you know, Lesnar's a conqueror. He wants something of value. So he is going to uh, break into the virgin neck of John Cena. And, and, you know, that's his conquest. That's a conquest he is worthy of. And, you know, it isn't long before John Cena's music does hit and he comes out. And, yeah, it, it seems like Edge and Christian have made themselves scarce at this point. And then Cena says his resolution uh, for 2015 is to win the championship. The only reason he doesn't knock uh, Lesnar uh, something fierce right now is so that he doesn't limp into the Royal Rumble and lose with an excuse. Uh, and, then, and then he ends it by saying that he has a gift for Paul Heyman. He then grabs Heyman. He attempts to uh, AA him or, or put a hurting on him. Lesnar tries to intervene. He gets caught in an AA, and uh, he slides out. So, yeah, Cena's a douche, and Brock Lesnar escapes intact for the time being. Yeah. Uh, man, I, I don't even know how to feel about this. The the opening segment up until Cena coming out was pretty awesome, but then Cena came out and ruined everything, which is what he does. Almost yep. like Mark Henry, except he's still not even as cool as him. I know, right? I miss Mark Henry. Why does he always have to like get injured or whatever every couple He months? shows up, does three to five months of work, and then disappears for like six. I wonder if that's like in his contract or if it really is. Maybe, yeah, maybe he is really on one of those him. legend contracts, dude. I mean, I mean, maybe I hope that's what it is because if he really gets injured with that frequency, that's that's just bad. But keep it yeah. focus. Uh, yeah, I I completely. Maybe it's agree. not full on injuries. Maybe he just gets worn down. Maybe you, you know, know what I mean. I, like yeah. w- w- when your body is that large for that long, I can't imagine it's easy to sustain the kind of level that he goes at. Oh, certainly not. He's been doing this for well over a decade. I mean, close yeah. to two decades at this point. I mean, he's been three hundred and fifty plus pounds for at least 15 16 17 years yeah and the fact that he's been doing incredibly physical work um i won't necessarily say all 300 nights a year that most wwe workers claim to do but at least 200 to 250 nights a year that's one hell of a toll on the body no matter how big you are then you add in the fact that he i mean as strong as he may be there's no way that he is a healthy human being regardless Right. Somebody that big. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I'm not surprised that he takes as much time off as he does, but I'm cool with it because if that helps him to extend his career, I would rather have Mark Henry for five months a year for the next five years than Mark Henry all year round for the next year and a half. Yeah, exactly. Beautifully said. So shifting focus back, you know, that does conclude our opening segment. So we know um, some matches we're getting tonight. And again, we've just had reaffirmed that Cena's a douchebag. So then we open up with our champion versus champion match that Christian made. Dolph Ziggler versus Rusev. And I got to tell you, Ashton, for me, these guys are the perfect opponents for each other. The perfect compliments. Because when you're Dolph Ziggler, you maximize that heat for Rusev being so beloved. And when you're a behemoth like Rusev, you garner all that sympathy for Ziggler when you're just imposing your will all over the place. I enjoy when these two work together every single time. It's just great stuff. Nobody makes the other guy look better every single time they're in the ring than Dolph Ziggler. And Rusev is the perfect guy to play off of that. Yeah, absolutely. I really enjoyed this back and forth. Ziggler did have uh, moments of life in this match. Like, he got the show off DDT at one point. He connected with... Uh, the Famouser, yes, even got a super kick at one point. So I love how Ziggler, and this isn't the only time that Ziggler has taken Rusev to the limit. But well, and love- then, dude, here's the thing. You can't even just say he took him to the limit. He won this match. Yeah, he did. But granted by DQ, yeah. so as to protect the big thing with Rusev, but Ziggler actually won this match. I mean, Rusev would not let up. That's kind he- of the thing with Rusev. Like, he'll win every match. Until he almost loses the match, and then he'll get himself DQ'd. <laughs> exactly. And, and you know what, though? It's always by Rusev's own power, you know, these DQs and everything else. It, it's never Yeah, like it's not weapons. like he's using weapons or anything. Exactly. You know, it's just always his own ferocity, uh, unable to really restrain himself, always wanting to put a hurting on somebody. It's just and like, I, and I I, look, it. look, ref, I know that there are certain rules, but I'm going to need more than five seconds to beat this guy. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I think it makes Ziggler just, again, seem very very tenacious, have a lot of heart, all that good stuff that a babyface should have. But it, it's when this segment, or, or this matchup, I guess I should say, uh, goes from good 
to very interesting because of all of the fallout, because then you see Rusev get the accolade outside of the ring. Ziggler's arms are tied up in the ropes, and uh, Rusev's got that torque, and he's just really bending Ziggler back. Ziggler's tapping out, and of course, as the commentators brilliantly remind us, that doesn't matter. That's kind of a pet peeve of mine, but whatever. Uh, well, and and- you know what, though? Here's the thing, though. Even if it was in a match, it still wouldn't matter because he was in the ropes. Exactly. Uh, but then Ryback comes to Ziggler's aid, he runs down to the ring. He nails a meat hook clothesline that looked just beautiful. And Rusev retreats. Uh, the crowd starts a big feed me more chant. And yeah, Ryback is just uh, looking triumphantly over Rusev. But Ryback isn't done here, which brings us yeah. to our next segment. And, and our first really interesting segment of the night. 